What's up, everybody? Welcome to SWAT MMA. This is episode number 102. My name is Jared. I'm here with Paul. What up? We are coming to you from the fight capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada. On today's episode, we are going to be smoking and talking all about the results of UFC 263, PFL 4, Bellator 260. We're going to take a look at next week's UFC card. We're going to have a large boxing breakdown of the four fights coming up this weekend. But before we dive into all the combat sports action, you know what to do. Grab your weed, fire it up, and let's dive into the weed of the week. Smoke weed every day. All right, this week we are smoking on two different kinds of flour and four different kinds of concentrates. For flour, we've got the two standbys we've had for the past couple weeks. Mob Boss, which is Tang Tang crossed with Chem Dog. And we've got some Blue Dream Haze left, which is Super Silver Haze crossed with Blue Dream. For our concentrates, Paul, we got a nice little handful, don't we? Yes, we do. You got that new Puffco vaporizer you picked up since last episode, too, yeah. right? This thing, it works like a champ. Yeah, I hit it when we were watching the UFC over the weekend, which was my first time using one of these. Is it ready to go? Uh, it's about to be. It's about to be. Well, we got, uh, was uh, this the Tropapaya Rosin in here? Yeah, this is Tropapaya Rosin, you know, uh, uh, indica dominant uh, hybrid of um, Tropicana cookies and papaya, which are two real good strains. Oh, that's tasty. Yeah. And then um, for the shatter, we got the ice cream cake. You know, gelato, 33, wedding cake, cross. And then for our uh, diamonds, we also have our Skittles, which are also super-duper flame. It's as yeah, those are like 80%, 90% THC on those. Yeah. And we've got the, uh, finally, we've got the Tropicana Cookies Wax as mm -hmm. well. You know, we're mixing it up with all the best Ooh. strains right now. <laughs> Dude, this rosin is nice, man. Oh, my yeah, God. That tastes always, so good, bro. The taste is always top <coughs> Now, rosin, if you're listening and you're unfamiliar with what it is, rosin is not um, its not a processed extract. It is just literally squeezed right out of the bud. They take a, usually a hydraulic press, although you can make some at home if you've got a right kind of uh, hair straightener and some wax paper. But they just press fresh cannabis and all of the THC as well as the terpenes just kind of squeeze out in this delicious goo and that is what rosin is so um like other like the thca and the others it needs to be activated it's like you can't eat it straight a lot of people i know have actually made that mistake um they'll, they'll just take their concentrates and add it to whatever they're eating and you can't do that you gotta you got to decarbolize that stuff but we've also got our packs three loaded up here as well. Whatever you're smoking on, everybody, we hope it's good. I'm gonna hit this bowl. I got to get a little water. That rosin is uh, it's not harsh, but it's like heavy on the lungs. Yeah. <laughs> concentrates. concentrates. In, I was gonna say concentrates in general aren't <coughs> to uh, help. Whatever you're smoking on, folks, hit us up in the comments wherever you're watching us, whether it's video on YouTube, if you're on SWATMMA.com. Or any of the podcast outlets we are on. If it has a comment section, let us know. As we continue to smoke down, I think we're going to go ahead and dive into the weekly wrap up. All right, on this week's weekly roundup, Paul, we've got uh, some pretty interesting cards over the weekend, I thought. Yeah, overall, I thought it was a really, really interesting weekend of combat sports. I mean, we had. We had PFL, we had Bellator, and then we had UFC. And then a whole bunch of celebrity bullshit. And then some silly. We don't want to talk right. about it. <laughs> you don't want to break down the Lamar Odom Aaron Carter fight. No, nah, dude, it was too good. Yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll leave that one for the pros. <laughs> but, um, so, starting off, let's start it off with the UFC. I thought that's where we really got the most news from, ultimately. Yeah, we had a lot of decisions on this card. I believe there were 11 yeah. decisions on the card. The whole main card, though, was pretty pretty fire across 
across the board, I thought. Well, let's talk about that because we can't talk about 11 decisions on here. Yeah, it's a lot. We can't talk. It was a pretty big card. It mm-hmm. seemed like it had a lot of uh, – well, it didn't seem like it had a lot of fights. Yeah. But let's start with the main card and the, the shocking opener to that, which was yeah, a, a hundred and – no, it was a 200? 205-pound. And five-pound contest yeah. between Paul Craig and Jamal Hill. Yep. Where most people were picking Jamal Hill to win this fight. Yeah. You and I and talked it about it last week. It was a good fight. Well, I would disagree that it was competitive when you look at the stats. But let, let's – it ended in round one at basically the two-minute mark. Yeah. And it goes on the official record as a TKO, which is a little bit ridiculous. Yeah, but first, let's say those stats. It was 23 to 1 on the punches. I mean – I Obviously, I'm thinking watching the fight. Three sub attempts. difference, yeah. But what was shocking was that – Paul Craig basically he gets Jamal Hill in an arm bar. Mm-hmm. And at first a few times. A few times. Yeah. And then when he finally sinks it in, Jamal doesn't tap. No. And the arm didn't. looks like it clearly breaks. It it makes a horrible noise and goes the direction it should never go. Yeah. And he's then wrapped up in a triangle and we're waiting, all of us watching, the whole world watching, is waiting for yeah. what to happen, Paul. Just the ref to break it up. Yeah, the ref to be like, Yeah, fight's over yeah. because that's what you do. That's, yeah, that's well, right. that doesn't happen. Yeah. And the ref is about, I don't know, a foot and a half from the action staring at it. Well, you know what it was? I'll give him a small, small, small bit of, you know, slack on the arm. Hmm. When it happened, at least. When it was flailing, yeah, you got to finish it. But when it happened, because Hill doesn't tap. And then he turned his arm, and it looked like it was going like it looked like he was had his arm inverted. You know what I mean? Where mm-hmm. it was like like he was trying to pick him up, but it was obviously like when you watch it in slow mo going the other way. And he turned his arm, and so his arm was like his arm twisted bent back backwards. the wrong way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he he winds up in a triangle because Paul lets go of his arm. Yeah. And then he winds up in the triangle, and the ref's not doing anything. And old boy's arm is flopping around yeah. like a dead fucking fish. Well, dude. remember like, we kept thinking because he let it go, we were like, oh, maybe it's not broken. It's not broken. It's the other way. And then when he got in the triangle, remember everyone in the room we were in, they were like, oh, no, it's not broken. It's fine. It's fine. And then he he starts punching him. Yeah. <laughs> Paul Craig has no choice but to start punching yeah, Jamal in the like, face, whatever, even though start, he knows yeah. the arm is broken. He's looking at the ref like, what the fuck? Yeah. And so he starts pummeling the hell out of his face. And then yeah. the movement between him and Hill trying to get up and get out. His arm is just flopping all yeah. over the place, clearly broken at that point, which uh, we'll, we'll discuss that in a second. Yeah. But And the ref is still standing there watching it for a – I mean, I don't know the exact stats, but it seemed like at least like 10 or 15 seconds of that arm bouncing every which way it should never yeah. bounce uh, while the ref fucking just stared at it and Paul Craig's giving him the stink eye and yelling at him while he's punching fucking yeah. Jamal in the face. Yeah. Finally, rough. he stops it. Yeah. Even it, it was so bad, and the refereeing was so bad that Big John McCarthy had to come out and talk about it. And was like, "This is what happens when you put local uh, local guys who haven't been at this level of fighting on large, high level shows with you know high level fights, and they don't know what they're doing. The people get hurt." Supposedly, that guy's a Brazil a Brazilian, <laughs> a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt. That referee, um, I question that statement because that people that know nothing about martial arts would have been looking at that and going, "Stop the fight!" Yeah, yeah. And so, it turns out later, Jamal Hill's manager releases a statement after they went to the hospital that they say. No, it's, I remember it was during the broadcast. Yeah. Well, Dana he went to White the hospital came. during the broadcast. Well, yeah, yeah, no, but Dana White came up to uh, uh, Paul Felder and freaking um, John Anderson. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. His manager they, like, told Dana White, on whoever, the, yeah. on the broadcast. Yeah, um, that it wasn't broken. It was severely dislocated, which is. I mean, it makes sense. Think about it. If it he must have been it, out of it, the socket. Well, no, you know what happened? He probably just caught it at, like the perfect spot, dislocated his elbow, and then. That's all ligament damage from there, so it could be worse than you know, maybe if he would have just broke his arm. Because now you got to think about all the different shit in his elbow that he just completely tore and ripped in a hundred different directions. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? All the muscles and ligaments and shit like that. That could, I don't see him coming back for at least like another year, dude. That's just mm-hmm. gonna be a minute. Mm-hmm. So he's 
he'll recover, it sounds like, all yeah, right, he's, at some yeah. point. But let's talk about what a fucking savage Paul Craig is, because yeah. there was a lot of oh, animosity, nice. real animosity before this fight. Even mm-hmm. in the cage, there was a lot of shit talking. Yeah. When Buffer wasn't announcing him, Paul was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fuck you up, man. I'm going to fuck you up. And yeah, then he went out there, and he not yeah. only fucked him up, I mean, he left him laying on the cage with what appeared to be a busted-ass arm. Yeah. And then was like, fuck you. Yeah. It was savage. Well, you dude. know what it was? It was just like the kind of shit talk that was just like both guys were game as fuck and both guys were looking to fight each other. It wasn't like, you know, after the fight, they they both shook hands and were cool and everything like that because, you know, like, I don't feel like it was ever well, like so. malice like type like shit talk. You know, it was always like, I'm going to fuck you up. No, I'm going to fuck you up. It was never like. It was heated, though. Like, yeah, it got heated for heated. sure, but because both guys weren't were refusing to step down, but it never got to a level where it became like personal or anything. I'm no, I, I didn't mean to imply that. Just um, it was heated, and yeah, I'm sure they did shake hands because one guy proved himself to be the the far alpha dog at least that night and in yeah. that fight. Yeah, I mean, not only did he whoop your ass, he left you just laying there like with a useless arm. But so so to the good. other just to just to kind of be. Just to kind of give a little pushback here, that also shows fucking Hill's toughness, though, dude. He fucking broke his arm and was just literally just fighting back, trying to scramble back to his feet, never tapped, never told the ref to stop the fight. Mm -hmm. He fucking broke his arm. Before he broke his arm, when he was in the fucking thing, he uh, when they transferred over, like when it first looked like he was about remember the first arm bar it looked like he was going to get finished yeah yeah and then they rolled over he put a thumbs up for that one and that one I thought he should have tapped too yeah, then he turns tough. around gets his arm broken still doesn't tap like no he's no pussy was, yeah like I mean, that was dude. that was two tough motherfuckers and one of them was just a little bit more technical I like think. he was like 8 and 0 oh, he's 8 and 1 now he's yeah. fine yeah. um it's only 30 so I yeah. mean he's still in his physical prime but Paul Craig's starting to make some noise here that was impressive um, he's already ranked, you know, he's ranked like 13th before this. Now, of course, Hill was unranked, so I don't, yeah. he, he may or may not move no, up. No, actually, they, they put him statement. in the ranking, weirdly, the week of. He was 13th and 14th matchup going oh, in. Oh, that's cool how that works out for the UFC like right. that. Suddenly, uh, it's just an unranked guy, but then by fight week, he's ranked. Yeah. Oh, that's dope. Strange. I've seen that happen before where, like, there'll be a championship fight, and he's fighting, like, the number four guy, yeah. but then, like, by the time the eight weeks rolls out to the he's fight, suddenly one. he's ranked number one, and nothing happened but the fight <laughs> announced. It's crazy. Anyways, uh, we have Bilal Muhammad at 170 taking on Damon Maya. That was a – it was a little mixture of things. I think it was a, a good performance by Bilal, and it was good. Uh, he was able to really shut Damian Maya down. But I also do think it was a little bit of Damian Maya being – on the back end of his career, and ultimately he's done with the UFC. Yeah, that was his last fight in on his contract. And, I mean, he went, like, one for 14 on takedown attempts or something. I think it was even worse than that. I think it was, like, one for 18. He only landed 21 punches, you know, to Bilal's 45. He did get one single takedown, but that was it. Uh, it was a convincing and victory Bilal for Bilal. And Bilal popped right back up, too. Yeah, he did. It's a name Bilal Muhammad needed. Yeah. And, um, you know, you've now we've got Damian Maya out post fight talking about he wants to fight Nate Diaz and is we have one more fight and I just I don't see Dana signing him for one fight to fight Nate Diaz. It's not gonna no. happen. I don't think that's a good fight either. I think Nate Diaz is a bright tool. Yeah, he'd tool him up for sure. Yeah, I don't doubt it uh one bit. Maya doesn't have any kind of punch in and I actually don't think he'd be threatened much on the ground, Diaz. So Yeah. Um what about the that speaking of Nate Diaz, I mean we're getting into the top half of this card, or the top three fights of this card. We have three five-round fights. We had Nate fighting Leon Edwards, and for basically what was the number one contenders fight, even though Nate's not ranked. But I mean, Nate's always ranked. Dana came out and said winner gets the title shot, but then that was like two months ago, and since then he promised it to Colby, and then post fight he still said Colby gets it. But yeah. Leon Edwards winds up winning a decision, holding if, on to a decision. Yeah, in the last minute, Nate starts tooling him up. But for some reason, I don't know why, Nate doesn't go in for the kill. Yeah. I mean. Points at him and laughs. He points at him, he laughs, and then he shimmies, and then he moves in. And and almost finishes him still. And it was like maybe 10 seconds he wasted. That if he would have swarmed in, it would have been over, dog. 
Like, I don't think he realized how shook Leon Edwards was yeah. at, in the moment. But that's just Nate Diaz, though, at the like, end of the day. Like, I know, but he could have done it. Could've. Like he was yeah, fucking a wobbled, doubt. no doubt, and he still almost did it. Yeah, you know, when you look at the fight stats, though, I mean, it's super close. You've got Leon Edwards landing seventy-seven strikes to Nate Diaz at seventy-six, but then you've got a four-zero takedown differential. Yeah. But then you've got like the near, I mean, super close to a finish in the last round, and then also a pretty close uh, fucking uh, knee bar that he had on him too. Remember when in the I believe it was third round when Leon took him oh, down? Oh yeah, he sure did. He went, yeah, he went for that. Uh, I can't remember which. One, I think it was a ankle lock or knee bar. Yeah, right? he started. He started with like an ankle lock and then switched it up to a knee bar. I think I can't quite remember, but but either way, it was like Nate was in the fight. He was just getting tooled up on the in the leg kicks and by some like elbows. If you take the leg kicks and elbows out of and the takedowns out, it was pretty. I don't I understand. It was a classic Nate Diaz fight, though, dude. It, you know it what is, it was? and that's what it I mean. It was just, it was like Nate not doing shit, but tooling and fucking around for three rounds, and then four and five, starting to actually land his combos. Then late in the fight, he almost wins, and now Nate Diaz can roll off into the sunset saying shit like he did in the post-fight press conference. Right, he afterwards, said, he's like, if this is the real world, the fight's done. If this is the real world, the, the real fight, done. You're, you're done. You're on ice skates, yeah, fight's a wrap. Like, like, no, that's, I guess, like, I guess that's true. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The like, fight would have been a wrap if he hadn't been, been a wrap clowning. You, yeah. Man. Fuck. It would have been a wrap was, you would have just ended it. I love Nate, man. I was I was so excited, man, when I thought that, I thought it was over. I did, too. That would have just been legend right there. Oh, yeah. That would have been a legendary finish. But I don't understand after all these years, why is it that you can still fucking beat a Diaz brother by kicking his front leg? It's true. Like, all these years, everybody knows it. Why don't they fucking fix it? I don't really think it's fixable. You can't check a kick? He didn't try to no, check you, any yeah, of them. Yeah, you definitely could check. But, hey, dude, here's the thing. He got his leg beat up for three rounds, but in round four and five, you could not even – it didn't seem like his leg was fucked up at all. No. Like, he never – like, he got buckled a couple times, but he never showed, like, signs of, like, like he couldn't push off it or do anything with his front leg, like, in the fight. Like, he, would just, he just ate that shit and kept it moving. Like, it was classic Nate Diaz. I was just thinking how different, you know, the scores would be on these decisions if he defended those kind of shit. Yeah. You know how different the scores would have been if they didn't have to go to the scorecards and he would have just finished Leon right there? I, I wish he would have just finished done him. It right he could have finished him. He just didn't. That's when you see it. Like, I mean, there's all kinds of clips of the shots uh, and you see how much time it dude, takes for him to wave the finger, smile, do the shimmy. It's like, oh, Well, bro. not only that, you see Leon's freaking, in the slow-mo, how his jaw, like, detached from his face. Like, yeah, and his brain disconnected from his legs and he, he was on the fucking yeah, chicken done, dance, dude. man. He was done. He had to close the distance and finish him there. But... Well, that's Nate Diaz, though. The, he'll he'll always be the guy who, like, you don't believe can win, but he'll show you he can. I like I, I it's like the text I sent you last night. He's fucking modern day Rocky. He fucking goes into every single fight. It's an absolute bloodbath of a fight where he He's just never dog. backs down and he just lets people beat him up until they're too tired to fight anymore. And then he just steps in and he's like, all right. My turn. Pop, pop, pop. He just hits the one, two, like Rocky. It is. And fucking it goes to decision and he loses by a round, but everyone in the crowd wishes there was one more round right. because he would have won. <clears throat> if there was one more round, Nate Diaz would be the greatest fighter of all time. <laughs> if there were six true, round though. fights, it, everyone would be fucked. But you know what I'm saying? I like, feel it. it's, he's modern day Rocky. You know, you ever, he's a hometown hero. He's fucking. He's Rocky. You he's never understand what now. the fuck he's saying. <laughs> right. <laughs> he's Rocky, bro. He is Rocky. Good <laughs> call, Rocky. my brother. <laughs> but I'd love to see it. I, I, if they pit, if they put him in a title fight next weekend, I would watch it. So, right. So. <laughs> Let's just be honest. Well, Leon isn't getting his title shot unless something changes, but maybe he has yeah. next. We'll yeah. see. As far as Nate, 
who knows what's next for Nate Diaz. Whatever he Nate says wants he wants to next, fight yeah. again soon. He said three months. That would be interesting. Yeah. If they match him up right. We'll see. What about the next fight on the card, though? We saw the flyweight title rematch between champion Davis and Figueredo versus challenger Brenda Moreno. Very different from the first fight. Yeah, I was wrong. I thought uh, I was really thinking Figueredo was going to uh, dominate for a bit and then take him down and sub him. Yeah, completely different. And no, instead we had he got subbed third round, 226, rear naked choke by Brendan Moreno, who outstruck him. I was going to say the script was completely flipped. Yeah. Like it was like everything we thought Figueredo was good at. He just like I I don't know if it was a weight cut like there's been obviously some rumors that the weight cut was so tough on him and stuff like that, and that's fine. We'll fight in a different weight class then. Yeah, you should hit thirty five then, dog. Yeah, but like everything that made Figueroa so scary, his striking, his his quickness, his power, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like I feel like when you fight someone like Brandon Moreno, who is you. Everyone builds you up to, like, tell you everything that you do that is so great and that nobody else can handle. And then you fight a guy like a Brandon Moreno who is, like, is just durable. He's durable as fuck and is going to be there with you the whole time. Like, he's going to match your intensity. He's going to match your, your cardio. He's going he's gonna to try to, you know, he's going to try to beat you at your own game because that's what Brandon Moreno ultimately did in this fight. He walked Davidson down. Hit him with body shots and and was hitting him with so many shots that, like, yeah, nobody yeah. saw coming. Those weren't even shots he hit him with in the first fight. He was walking him down, hitting him with combos and hitting him with every punch. Yeah, outstruck him two to one basically. It was forty seven twenty four. Yeah, I mean two takedowns, two sub attempts. Yep, and a KO. It's cool. a beautiful thing. Submission, but yeah. Yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> but um. Yeah, it was just one of those fights where, like you were saying, history has shown that usually in a rematch like that where the first fight was super close and the challenger lost, the champion usually shows their dominance in the second fight. Mm -hmm. This was a complete complete flip of the script where Moreno showed that maybe he in that first fight he didn't – I feel like he had a supreme confidence in this fight. You know what I mean? He was just – like I said, he was just walking him. In the first fight, I felt like he was more reactive to what Figueredo was doing, and he caught him in a lot of, like, good shots. This time, he controlled the pace of the fight. He decided where it went, too, with the takedowns and everything like that. Right. So, <clears throat> I think this is, like, the birth of a star for the UFC, ultimately. Yeah, I think so. He's a pretty charismatic guy. Uh, what he became the first Mexican-born UFC champion. I know that's important for some people. It probably yeah. gives at least the country down there Absolutely. Um, a lot someone to cheer for, which is awesome. <clears throat> yeah, and the kids down and there cool. who are – well, you think about, like, Mexican culture also. It's, like, predominantly, like, centered around boxing. Mm -hmm. Whereas, like, now Moreno is able to, you know, maybe add a little avenue for people to, you know, move over to the mixed martial arts world. I say important to some people because I just I always look at the UFC so cynically because yeah, yeah, they're it. seeing dollar signs because look oh, at what yeah. they did with Kane Velasquez. Well, yeah, they're opening who they're was, opening a PI in, yeah. in Mexico. And, and <laughs> Kane was marketed nonstop as mm -hmm. the, the Mexican UFC champion, even though he was born in Cali. Mexican American, and, yeah. Yeah, and went to you know, and then they tried to go down to Mexico and do big shows around him, but I mean, he barely spoke Spanish, and you could see they're trying to capitalize on a market, but it wasn't really yeah. someone that the country felt. I think. They like they knew much about him. He's just yeah. like this American guy, yeah. you know. But now they've got someone from their country who's in a weight class that most of them fight around in boxing as well. Yeah, you know, they true. tend to be the smaller guys in boxing. True. So I think uh, I say that just because I think the UFC is like cha ching. Well, and then also you got uh, Moreno does the Spanish version of the commentary team on a lot of these fight nights and mm. some of the pay per views. I so, didn't know that. So good. Yeah. yeah. So his. He's a voice they'll recognize also from the desk, you know? Right, for sure. Which is good for yeah. him, man. He's He's got a bright future. And he's still young as hell. Isn't he only like, he's only what, 28? Yeah, he's, like he's 23, yeah. 23 really? He's only like 23? Something. I, don't, I don't know. I could be wrong. I'm thinking of, uh, I'm not good with age. I'm not good with age. Nah, I don't pay attention. But, yeah, but, uh, great story. 
yeah, good good job with him. Davis and Figueredo, I think, should move up to bantamweight. Even though he's only five foot five, he's thick as fuck. I mean, he was way bigger than Moreno, even though Moreno was like two inches taller than him. So he should move on up, in my opinion. And let's dive into the final fight on the UFC 263 card, which was the rematch between Israel Adesanya and Marvin Vittori, which was from a few years ago, a split decision uh, early in Adesanya's career. (coughs) You know, Vittori winds up losing a five-round decision, right? And it was a dominant performance. Yeah, 50-45. In 96, 58 on the strikes. Uh, Vittori did have four takedowns, but he couldn't do jack shit with them. And Izzy reversed, too. And, yeah, and Izzy reversed, too, which is very impressive. Um, yeah, he, he just never had anything going. Yeah, I think we saw an evolution in Izzy's game over the weekend. Because I feel, uh, obviously, this is what Jan was able to do. But obviously, Jan much larger than Marvin Vittori. Way bigger. Yeah. Um, I feel like Marvin tried to, I guess, do a similar game plan yeah, to Jan. He didn't but have I the d- skills just, and the size to execute, though. I don't even think it's that. I just feel like he just completely fluffed the game plan. <laughs> he's he's taking these half ass shots on the cage with a guy who's naturally longer than him and has leverage <laughs> when – if you watch the Jan fight and you watch a lot of these guys who fight these smaller or like longer limb guys who are but a little bit skinnier, mm-hmm. you got to take them down in the middle of the in the middle of the cage. Yeah. Because then they don't have any leverage. You know what I'm saying? Cuz that's all wrestling is is leverage. Yeah. These guys see, you know, they see the game plan and they think they're executing it, but it's not. He was walking He's walking Izzy back to the, to the cage. cage. Yeah. Is he's then dodging going for all his strikes, takedowns. and then he's going for shit takedowns. He's not even shooting either. He's just doing a half-assed level change and, like, shooting into his body, which you're never going to finish a takedown unless you're fucking fighting someone who, com- who is just not athletic. Like, that's yeah, he was just doing, what it is. like, takedowns like a real new wrestler, just basically, he was like, like, lowering his shoulders yeah, and running forward. Yeah, lowering his shoulders like, and running forward. Like, that works sometimes. When you're fighting someone who just has no takedown defense. But Izzy might be a shitty, like, grappler, I guess, when you compare him to, like, world-class level grapplers. But he is known for not getting taken down and being out of position. Like, he may get taken down in the open mat, like, by good wrestlers. But if you look at, like, his other fights, he was not getting taken down by anybody. He was no. He was stuffing a lot of people's takedowns. And I feel like in this fight, we learned that he's been working on his ground game because he was literally rear naked choke. He had his back took. He had the freaking – he had his legs uh, mm-hmm. locked, and he Two had reversals. the rear naked choke, yeah. and he just turned into it and kept fighting and kept scrambling and got out of it. No, he did good. It was a very dominant performance. Is what he needed to go and put out there after the Blahovich yeah. fight. Mm-hmm. So good job, Izzy. Calls out Robert Whitaker for the rematch there, which, you know, we all know that's... We were saying who was more rightful contender before this fight, Vittori or Whitaker, so it's the fight that makes sense for right now. Yeah. That does make a lot of sense. But you never know a middleweight. Like I've said, any fresh face could make some... Just like this Vittori fight, same thing. Mm -hmm. Any fresh face in this division that is close to the top could get that fight stolen from Whitaker if... Because... One big thing I do want to point out in that post-fight interview is Israel said whenever we get this COVID stuff figured out, we can figure out a fight in Auckland. Right. But then after the fight, Izzy also said he wanted to fight in October. Yeah, he does want to stay busy, which is nice. So let's say Whitaker holds out again for the big, you know, the big freaking money fight. With Izzy in a big stadium like that, you know, out there, we mm. could see Izzy fight someone else in the, you know, in the, the near in future. Between. Yeah, that's for sure. Because he didn't take much damage in this fight at all. Like, no. And he wants to keep fighting. He's not getting any younger. I mean, people like to, you know, compare him and Jones. With him and he has over a hundred fucking combat sports fights. Right, and he's far behind Jones 
like everybody else is on title yeah. defenses. And stuff. Exactly. I mean, he's no. He's trying to. He'd have to triple game. up literally yeah. to fucking catch Jones. So he's, he's been fighting. He's like got a long time. Three or four times a year. He's got to keep that up for like the next two years to even think. Yeah, if he fights three that. times a year for the next two years, he'll have another six. So he'll just, and he'll still he'll be five 11. behind Jones if be Jones doesn't like, win another yeah. title. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. but. Uh, outside, I, I don't like those comparisons anymore. I just never think that fight's gonna happen. Well, no, I just meant age wise, honestly. Like him and him and Jones, like everyone thinks that uh, he's like way younger than Jones. Him and mm-hmm. Jones are actually pretty close in age. Yeah, they are. So, uh, there was one other notable fight on the card. I just do want to point out one fight of the night. It was on the undercard. We had Brad Riddell versus Drew Dober. That was oh, a yeah. very entertaining scrap. Oh yeah, that was um, a freaking scrap and a half. Yeah, back and forth. Riddell gets the win, and Riddell is Israel Adesanya's striking coach, so that's yeah. pretty interesting. And Drew Dober's always game, but he outstruck him uh, 89-73 and he had five takedowns in that fight. It was a real back and forth fight. Though. It was. It was like I think it was Riddell who got hurt early in the fight. It was, and he just recovered in the second and third round. He was so sharp. Like yeah, the he first round, really, he maybe really maybe he had some jitters or something, but he got rocked and survived. And then came back in the second and third, looked great. That he did. Um, it's kind of interesting just to see somebody that young who's a striking coach of somebody that high level and then starts in MMA himself. Now I think he's 11-1. and one. And Drew Dober was ranked, what, 14th. So Riddell might crack the rankings. We'll see. But yeah. we'll see where he goes from there. It's pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. I think that wraps up the UFC all right, well, what about PFL 4 now that we're wrapped up with the UFC? Um, unfortunately, we had a couple withdrawals early. We had what, Anthony yeah. Pettis uh, withdrew for undisclosed reasons as far as I know, but he is rescheduled two weeks out, so it can't be anything too terribly yeah. serious. Mm-hmm. But the main thing on this card was, of course, the main event, right? Yeah, the debut of Clarissa Shield in mixed martial arts. Pretty interesting fight, I gotta say. It goes to the third round. Yeah, it was good and, and there was bad. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She was tested very early, taken down, mounted, mm-hmm. and did not panic. I mean, in the first two rounds, I think she was mounted for two minutes in the first, and somewhere between two and three in the third, overall. Um, but I mean, I'm sorry, in the second. But then, in, and she never panicked. She yeah. never lost control. She did actually a good job of getting underneath mm-hmm. and avoiding a lot of the ground and pound. Yep. And, what, at the end of the second round, she kind of sneaks out. What, she had an arm bar attempt? Yeah, something she, like that. She sneaks out, gets up on top, and starts raining some blows down. Like, right at the end of that second round, the tide kind of turned for yeah. Clarissa. And then the third round, She's man. She's stuffing takedowns all yeah. of a sudden. Sprawling nice. Sprawling hard, yeah. And that's, you know, that speaks to her cardio and speaks to her work ethic, you know, that she's she dealt with that adversity in those first two rounds. Because you know what ends up happening, too, when you're on bottom and you're you're mounted? Sometimes you get drained because, you know, you're carrying all this weight and you're trying to get this person off of you. And, you know, and also in your mind, you're like, fuck, I can't get out. You know, it, it drains you mentally and physically. That right. when you get out of, you know, being from bottom, you're shot. Exactly. And, you know, I feel like she really overcame that in the first two rounds and in the third just did what she does. You know, she catches yeah, she her stuffed with, the takedown. Stuffed you know, take, Elkins came yeah. in for another takedown. She stuffed it and then just kind of rotated in on top of her. Yeah. And well, it was like a weird, weird right before that, too, because she stuffed a takedown and then like. Elkins kind of stayed on the ground, and she hit her with a nasty uppercut mm-hmm. that kind of dazed her, and she just was like, okay, let's go to the ground. Yeah, then. and she kind of falls yeah. down. She wasn't mounted on her. She was in this kind of weird it was almost, weird side yeah. control. It was like a of. side control, but it was a very awkward, like I don't really know how to run side control. Side control. Yeah, it was an awkward <laughs> position, and her corner is yeah. yelling at her to stand up, and Clarissa yeah. decides not she to, and she just nah. kept raining right, right hands down yeah. on Brittany Elkins' head. And, I mean, Elkins was game. I mean, she went out there. She did what she's supposed to do, which is get inside and take her <laughs> down. And she tried the ground to pound. The problem was Clarissa did a good job of defending and getting underneath, like we talked yeah. about. But then you can only eat so many of those blows from somebody like – I mean, her punching was beautiful. What was it, like 90 of 96 or something like that? Yeah, she landed 90 of 96 strikes. That's I mean, crazy. Think about that. That's, That's crazy. 
that's nutty. You don't see percentages nuts. like that in boxing or MMA. That's really impressive, yeah. especially on such a large. You might see something like, oh, he landed seven of nine yeah. on some short fight, mm -hmm. but to have at least you know around the hundred punch range uh, and your full three, fucking uh, well, she knocked hmm. her out with like a minute and a half to go, so it was like yeah. a full three round fight. So the accuracy was just on point. And you could just see, even on the ground in the awkward position she was in, just the right hand, she, they were just straight, yeah. beautiful, perfect punches. Mm -hmm. And she's so fast. Like, she's fast in boxing with the big gloves. And I was excited to see what her speed was going to be like in the MMA gloves. And it, it was pretty impressive. I think yeah. at one point they clocked her at it was either 19 miles an hour. I think I like PFL does that. They show the live punch stats, but they show strike speed as yeah, well. Yeah, they break it down all the way. Yeah, which is it was pretty fun, but I was really impressed. Uh, what did you your overall thoughts? Yeah, I think it was a good start. You know, I feel like um, now she has she knows where her deficiencies are, and she knows where she's obviously always going to be great on the ground or <laughs> on the feet. She right. needs to get better on the ground. Is basically what I'm saying. Um, and yeah, it, it's good work. You know, that's that's really what it's going to come down to with these first few fights for her is just. It's gotta, it's gotta be good work. You gotta go in there, and you know, you maybe face some adversity, but you gotta, you know, face think, it and keep it coming. I think it's better for her to go out and go with a three rounder yeah. and and be mounted like that and have a hard time getting out and have it last a while. Then if she just yeah. had gone out and like let's say lit her Slept up in her thirty and, seconds yeah. and it was over, yep. then it'd be like, well, well, you know what? Also, that would do is it would also give PFL the incentive to. Oh well, now you need to face a ten and zero person. You know, <laughs> like it's like Kayla now. Yeah. No, 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 no. no. Let's not do that, you know. But yeah, this is a good start. It's a good, you know, base to you know start your career with, and there's, you know. Yeah, it was, it was good overall. Very impressive. Yeah. Um, and there's basically one other fight on that we want to talk about. Yeah, you know, my boy Bubba Jenkins coming in, getting the unanimous decision over Bobby Moffitt, just he doing what he good. does. He getting looked the real solid. Yep. <clears throat> He's uh. He's going to be a force in this year's tournament. I yeah, think. I think he's looking to win it. Very impressive point. fight. Um, his striking looked nice. Yeah. Obviously, his wrestling's on point. Yeah. I and mean, that goes without saying. Yep. So I'm excited to see this season play out. This is really the first year I've mentioned this before that I'm paying attention to the PFL. And yeah, me too. It's well, uh, you know what? I just liked all the signings they made. All these divisions are are pretty stacked. Like when you look at it across the board, like. Bringing in Anthony Pettis, Roy McDonald. I know where Doom is kind of his future with them is kind of, you know. Well, yeah, let's talk hazy. about that here while we wrap up the, the yeah. results of PFL4, even though that wasn't part of it. Yeah. There was some news that came out. He was scheduled to fight soon. Yeah, I think he was on the five. But now he's out because he's out there's indefinitely. Some brain swelling left over from his last fight. Now, there's, there's the conversation, obviously, going around. There's, like, how do you – continue to let a guy who is close to his 40s who is having brain swelling how do you continue to let him fight and i don't think i think it's going to be basically what i'm saying is i think it's going to be tough for him to get cleared by a doctor from here on out you know yeah this might be the end in at least american and bigger organization um mma for <coughs> Or doom. I mean, maybe yeah. he can find someone in Brazil that'll sanction him to fight over there, and or he can start doing jujitsu again, or he can go back to jujitsu maybe. But I was thinking the same thing. He's forty-three. He's been KO'd multiple times. Mm -hmm. He's taken how many strikes to the head, and now he's got brain swelling. In his last fight, he, he got KO'd, and he didn't even see it coming because yeah. he thought the fight was over. Like, right. He. I mean, he had some bad luck with that. Like the yeah. dude tapped and then slept him. Yeah. As, as we've discussed on here, and then this Bitch happened. Moves. Oh, well, that's tough. That's the fight game. But you're right. Yeah. I don't think he gets sanctioned again after this. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. Very. And I and I think that's probably the correct thing to do. I mean, yeah. Jesus. Yeah, I mean, when you, like you said, the extensive career that he has ranging all over the world, it's kind of hard for me to sit here and be like, oh, no, he deserves to come back. You know what I mean? It's right. just tough. Tough, tough game you play there. And, um, I really can't blame him if he chooses to step away. Or and I like I agree also is it's going to be tough to get sanctioned to begin with, you know. So I think that wraps out uh wraps up our PFL. Yeah, that wraps up the fights we want to talk about yeah. with PFL and that leaves us with Bellator 
260, which was headlined, you know, by the championship uh, 170 fight yep. and had some fairly interesting fights on the undercard. Mm -hmm. um, let's start briefly here with the return of Nick Newell, who entered mm -hmm. this contest 16 and 3. Mm -hmm. It seems like we've seen him lose a lot lately, but and it's easy to forget that prior to that, I mean, he was, was 16 he and 1. WSOF champion or something like that? He fought Gaethje for it and went five rounds with him. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I remember. Um, and that was before any of us really knew quite the savage Gaethje was. I mean, those yeah. of us in the know did, but mm -hmm. the general world was like, oh, maybe yeah. Newell's not that good because this Gaethje kid whooped his ass. But there's not a lot of shame in getting beat up by Gaethje. But he comes back. He loses a split decision, uh, in my mind, unfortunately, to Bobby King. So he falls to 16-4. and four. Yeah, weird scoring um, there. 30-27s on both sides and then 29-28. Yeah, you had one judge thinking Newell swept all three, one judge thinking King swept all three. I, why, Paul, why is there no discussion of that after the fight? I mean, maybe there is by me and you, maybe some yeah. MMA guys discuss it on some other bullshit. That's just a weird, but weird I mean, way to look at a decision. Don't you think a thing like that, that they should, these judges should have to go before somebody... And explain themselves, well, that's not a, because they did something wrong, but because how do we fix it if we don't know what they're seeing so differently? Yeah, well, here's you know? the problem when you talk about um, Bellator cards is they're done through the Mohegan Sun, so they're done through the Indian tribe, so they'd have to go through the tribe to get the fight, you know, reviewed and all that shit like that. So I don't really know what the process is for... You know, I'm not even that's who saying, they're sanctioned through. Right. Why can't somebody else? And I'm not trying to say to, to like embarrass these guys. I'm saying yeah. something's wrong when one I judge can, thinks yeah. one thing and the other judge thinks the complete, complete opposite. opposite. And yeah. we can't find out why if nobody explains themselves. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to embarrass nobody or fucking gaslight. I'm just saying, dude, where is so? Can't somebody step up and be like, we're going to create our own thing where these guys can just come to? What did you see? What did you see? And where did well, this go wrong? Was... So we can try to fix things across the board. I mean, for fuck's sake, we all just, not we, but just the collective we ignore. That happens all the time. And we only really hear about it, people getting outraged about it if it's a major fight. Yeah, but here's the problem, though, is, you know, you got, it's just, <laughs> you got so much, like, hoops and shit you have to jump through to get a fight overturned that most people never quit once a decision's made they don't go through all the shit that would make a judge have to you know explain 30 no, i don't even mean to like, like overturn it i mean it is what it is but i'm saying how do we educate judges on how to better score fights because somebody of those two needed to score that fight better how how do we if we don't get them to say well this is what I thought I saw and this guy says this is what I thought I saw, that's all I'm saying. I mean, it's not going to get overturned, but can can we at least get a conversation started where these people explain themselves a little bit to somebody who then can fucking try to better educate judges on how to score? It doesn't have to be state by state commission. They, yeah. Somebody could start their own damn judging school. I think McCarthy does some shit. Where these guys could just go to and get independently certified. It's not going to matter to the commission, but it's going to matter to the UFC, maybe. It'll matter to me and you and the rest of the fans that these guys are better <laughs> educated. And you know who it'll really matter to? The fighters, obviously. Fuck yeah, man. Yeah. So. Yeah, I guess when you look at it that way, yeah. Because for these guys, every fight for them is a major decision. Yeah, true. I mean, every fight for them is a major fight. Yeah. Like. Yeah. The, your whole career can get fucked by a couple of judges making a few bad decisions in a few fucking fights, and suddenly, you know, you're from undefeated prospect to fucking, you know, five and four or some bullshit. Yeah. I see what you mean. That's all I'm saying, but let's move on. My rant is over. <laughs> um, Bellator, um, the rest of the card, we had, uh, let's just move up to. Main card. The main card, yeah. Yeah, my, my boy Aaron Pico coming in. Showing some freaking, you know, evolution to his game, finally. Yeah, he had a lot of takedowns. It was a wrestling-heavy performance he had against Aiden Lee. Yep. Seems like he was able to kind of break his will with the wrestling as well. The other dude seemed very uh, frustrated. 
And he's strung together, you know, four fights. Pico has four in a row now. He's climbed yeah. up to eight and three from four and three, which is a hell of a career turnaround early. Because yeah. he was making mistakes, and he's fixed well, it, he's man. he's been working at Jackson's gym as well. Mm-hmm. Putting the work in. That's everything. But, yeah, he subbed him with an Anaconda choke uh, round three at about a minute and 30 into it. Mm-hmm. Uh, which impressive. You know, he gets those KOs a lot. We're used to that with Aaron Pico. But to see him get out there and do a wrestling-heavy game plan and then the get a submission, submission yeah. nice it's good work good work sir yeah. Yeah. so that was really good to see i know you're a big fan so you're excited to see that i'm gonna yep. hit this pipe here well let's talk about another guy who's now on a five fight win streak in the uh welterweight division in bellator is jason jackson who was able to get a 30 27 decision over paul daly which is no joke no paul daly is a veteran He's a good fighter. He's ranked in Bellator, obviously. I don't yeah. know his current ranking, but I'm pretty sure he's in the top six or seven. Yeah, I think he's top ten or something like that. But Jackson, who's the third-ranked uh, fighter in the division, like I said, this is his fifth, fi- fifth win in a row right here. His other two wins were against uh, freaking <coughs> Phil Davis and um, uh, Benson Henderson. So he's he's been on a roll. That's a nice string of wins right there. Yeah. Well, he's going to be knocking at the door for a title shot here over there real soon, I'd say. Yeah. Especially getting a name like Daly. I mean, that's that's a solid name. It carries a lot of weight in Bellator. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, what about that main event? We talked a lot about it last week where mm-hmm. we had Douglas Lima, a well-established champ over there, yeah. fighting Yaroslav Amasov. I think that's how you yeah. say it who was coming in undefeated. As you mentioned, he was a champion in Sambo, right? Yeah, four-time uh, national champ or something like that. Well, he's still undefeated yeah. and the new Bellator champion after a just domination. Very yeah. dominant performance. Yeah. Your thoughts on his potential over there? I mean, I feel like he is similar to – I hate to be like this, but he, he's very similar to like – Khabib, he just is relentlessly going to to chase you down and take you down. Like we saw that in um, his last two fights before this too, where he fought you know freaking two Hodge Trophy winners and just re- was relentless with the takedowns. And then comes in here against Lima, who's always had trouble with grapplers to begin with, and he just completely frustrated him. And that's. Picks up a 50-45 across the board. I think one judge had it uh, 49-46. But, um, yeah, it was just domination. And, you know, got a got a couple boo birds out there. But, you know, when you're talking about oh. high-level fights like that, winning the title is life-changing. You can't boo someone for relentlessly taking someone down. Boo the guy who's getting taken down. Yeah. Right, boo the guy that can't stop it. Yeah, um, he's out there doing his thing. Douglas Lima has a good takedown defense. I think this just speaks. Uh, I mean, he, he's been he's in always a had lot of troubles guys. though. That's like you know, if you look across his career, you know, you look Ben Askren was able to take him down. Um, what's the other guy? Um, Korshkov. He had trouble with Korshkov w- with the takedowns, and then ultimately came back and, and these started are fights taking he's won though. No, but he lost the Askren fight, and he yeah, lost he one of the Korshkov fights. I don't, I don't blame too many people for getting taken down by Ben Askren when he was <laughs> in his prime. Right? This freaking guy, Amazov, is freaking wrestling. like He's he's literally took two two Hodge Trophy winners down more times than they anybody else has in MMA history, like in their entire careers for both of them. Yeah, and he climbs to, let me see, I think it's 26-0. and 0. Yeah, 26-0 yeah. and 0 now. With that. I mean, that's it's a notable Khabib level. record. It really is. So let's see what's next for He's him. He's Khabib and Bellator. And he might wind up being UFC bound before we know it. I mean. Could happen. I don't know how long a fighter like that wants to stick in Bellator if he is that dominant, mm-hmm. that undefeated. I mean, who knows what his contract he signed is. I'd love to see him and uh, freaking your boy Usman go at it. Yeah, that could be I'd very interesting. That. I could go for that. It's too bad we can't see fights like that, but. Maybe we will in the future if he does come over to the UFC. Yeah. But I think that ends the weekly wrap-up section, Paul. And that brings us into a new segment for the show, our Fighter on Fire. <laughs> All 
right, this in our very first Fighter on Fire segment, which is where we highlight fighters who have done some amazing things and are streaking in their respective um, promotion. It doesn't have to be UFC. It doesn't have to be MMA. It can be boxing. It can be whatever promotion we are looking at. But this week, it does happen to be a UFC fighter, Paul, one we chose not to talk about in the breakdown earlier because of this very reason. And who are we talking about, my friend? We're talking about Terrence McKinney. Over the weekend, was able to, you know, end up knocking out Matt Frivola in seven seconds, which is a huge UFC debut for him. Seven seconds. Um, and Matt Frivola is a very tough fighter. And he came in, in the UFC for sure. Yeah, he came in and took this fight on short notice. He had yeah. just fought, um, I believe it was seven or eight days ago in LFA. And here, here's the thing about that, dude. That was a KO one minute and 12 seconds. Yeah. into the first round and then you know what his fight was before that well paul that was a ko uh 16 seconds into the first round oh and uh, his fight before that that was a ko i mean a loss he had two losses but then his fight before that another ko he has another seven second 43 second he's got three quick minute subs this guy is yeah. something goes in there and finishes the fight yeah he's 510 he's fighting um 155 at 155 yeah. So he's tall, he's good size for the weight class, mm -hmm. and he's got, a, I think, a decent mix here of KOs and submissions. I mean, he's got six subs and five KOs. Yeah, and he's also a real, like, high-decorated wrestler. He wins a college wrestler and a state champion high school wrestler. So, you know, he, was, he has parts of his game that he hasn't even shown in his career, it would seem. Yeah, because he's going out and laying people down laying with his Laying people fists. down with his hands, yeah. And he's uh, he's eleven and three right now, so he's still pretty young in his fight career. But he's experienced enough to hit the UFC, I'd say, clearly with this victory. But even prior to that, it's not like some of these guys come in at five and zero oh or something. You know what I mean? Or five yeah. and one. You know, fourteen fights is that's a good amount. A mm -hmm. little bit more to his story, though. Yeah, we're. Uh there was an article that came out a couple of days before his like his debut, and uh, some like he was like he had overcome like being a uh, drug addict and all yeah, kinds. He came of stuff out of like college that. addicted to drugs, right? Yeah, and then apparently gets so close to an overdose, like people call the cops and the paramedics. Yeah. They but show then, up, but and then they showed up, and you know he got he got like freaked out and was like tased by the cops and died twice came back to life yeah paramedics and bring him back twice yeah, that's crazy gets off the drugs turns his whole life around now he's in the ufc yeah in the ufc yeah. mom Seven had him when she was out. 16 years old yeah he's that's one tough. of five kids yeah it's crazy super tough so he's faced a ton of adversity yeah Sounds like he made it to college through that, which is an accomplishment. I mean, when you got yeah. a sixteen-year-old mom, that you're you're. He wrestled at uh, <clears throat> uh, North Idaho with one of my friends, Carlos. Okay. And uh, that's literally like their top five in the nation for it's a junior college, but it's like it's like the way wrestling works, like at the college level, is like basically if you're like not making the grades or something like that, you go to the junior college level, you win win you know, tournaments there. You can win national titles, stuff like but that. But they have elite wrestling, basically, yeah. is what you're saying. At junior, junior college, college is levels. damn near D1 level sometimes because you have a lot of D1 kids who don't have D1 grades that go JC for two years. It's the same thing in football, basketball. You. Yeah, you go JC for two years, and then you go to the, you go to a, a big university after that. So he was at one of the biggest, like, uh, JCs in wrestling, like, in, in the United States. They're like they've won, I think like three of the last four national titles. Okay, like so he's got legit wrestling credentials. Obviously, he's packing a ton of power. I mean, this yeah. wasn't his first it's, KO. Yeah. This wasn't some lucky shit. Like he's repeatedly going out there and laying fools to waste. He's got three subs, which unfortunately were you know where there's something we can't see. This is back in cage sport, um, yeah. so we can't go back and watch him. But I'm a, I'm assume he uses wrestling to just take people down and sub them. That's that's going to yeah, be. And he did sense. it. You know, his first three fights were um, he had a rear naked choke, rear naked choke, then an arm bar, yeah. all within the first basically two minutes. Yep. 
Right. And then one that same guy I was telling you about that uh, was his teammate in college. They're actually teammates at their gym. He's a black belt, so you got to imagine he's rolling with a black belt who's also a, was a college wrestler every single day. So you know the his grappling has got to be on point. Yeah, because right after that he gets a, and when he makes it over to um or to his next fight he gets a knee bar yeah. in the first forty three seconds. Yeah. So it seems like. He goes out and finishes the fight. That's what the UFC wants. That's what Dana is kind of like, you know, especially with the Contender Series, which he was on and, you know, didn't go as he wanted to. But since then, he's proved that he is le- he's just had a bad night. You know what I mean? Right. And like, like his first TKO loss was due to a leg injury early. Yeah. I mean, he lost, if you look at his record, it says a TKO in 39 seconds, but it also says there was a leg injury. Yeah. All right. Then he comes right out and he rattles off three wins, right? And then he goes, what, like you said, to the, the Contender Series. This is in July of 2019. Yeah. And he fights Sean Woodson, and he just, man, a flying knee hits him. Yeah. I mean, that shit happens. Shit happens. But he doesn't let that stop him. You know, he, he goes back to the uh, Midwest Championship fighting. But then he gets subbed. All right, first round sub. Don't know what happened there. But shit then he happens. comes back and he rattles off three straight amazing wins i mean we're talking yeah. 16 seconds 17 second 12 or minute 12 and now seven seconds in the big show yeah so he's that, in the future that's a fucking fighter on fire right there yeah, hell yeah. and that's a guy who's been tested a bit who obviously in his personal life has overcome mm-hmm. all kinds of shit he's 26 years old i think this is a dude that's gonna make some noise immediately yeah, outside of sure. this first obviously he's making noise now i'm talking <laughs> here on out 55 is a shark tank it would be great to see some fresh blood in there because you know that's one thing that's kind of been a little stagnant at 55 is there's a ton of talent but a lot of guys have fought each other already mm-hmm. so they refuse to fight each other again like, exactly some new blood coming in there would be really really nice so yeah. i'm excited to see that bro and uh congratulations to terrence mckinney yeah our fighter on fire so you know what time it is now paul boxing breakdown We had a lot of good Let's boxing action this past week. Mm-hmm. We got some interesting boxing action this next week. Yeah, there's a lot of weird fights coming up. <laughs> there's some good fighters. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they're good fights, and there's yeah. some weird fights For sure. that we, we definitely have. Where would you like to start, sir? Well, while, while you're picking out where to start, I'm going to fire up this. Is that still hitting, you think, with those diamonds? If not, I'm going to put some more in there. Let's see. We'll fire up this oh, no, Vapeco. Yeah, I fucked it up. Or I mean Vapeco. <laughs> this Puffco with some of these THCA diamonds. Yeah, well, let's just uh, dive into last weekend's fight. We had Shakur Stevenson taking on uh, Jeremiah. Uh, I'm not going to fuck his name up. His name is kind of a tough one, isn't it? Nakatalia. Nakatalia, I yeah. I don't know, but it was, but a it was dominant. dominant win for Shakur. And, you know, just, you know, another step on the... The ladder of success for Shakur Stevenson. I think he he's, swept all rounds, didn't he? Yeah, he yeah. won a 120 to 107 decision, which is yeah, press it twice. Yeah, there you go. Three but chances, uh, yeah. yeah, just a fight where he just showed pure dominance throughout. You know what I mean? He, I I do think he could have stepped on the gas a bit and probably knocked him out, but I mean, seems like he thinks the same because he came out and apologized. Yeah. Afterwards. All right, I'm gonna hit this. No, nah, it's not ready yet. You got to wait oh. for it to vibrate on the second time. Thought it did. Now it's ready. All right. <laughs> no, nah, but, yeah, he, he felt the same way. And I I feel like it was just a – he said he just wasn't feeling good. I mean, maybe. I mean, who knows. But I do think he could have finished. I think that's just where he feels bad. I mean, it's weird to apologize for such a dominant performance, but yeah. he could have put him away, I feel, but he didn't. But either way, he gets the W. Yeah, like I was saying, it's just another, you know, another win to add to the resume. And, yeah, I mean, the way he's going right now, he, he could gets be, that interim title now, right? I think he has the legitimate title, actually. Too many in boxing to follow, but yeah, right. oh, damn, these diamonds are nice. Well, what about these upcoming matches that we have we've got basically four fights coming up here this approaching weekend although one of them to me 
one of the cards itself is super sus. <laughs> but it is what it is. But let's talk about some of the more legit bouts. What about Tiafoma Lopez? He's making his first defense of all these titles here at lightweight. Yeah. He's fighting George Cambosis. Cambosis, Cambosis. However you say it. Uh, you know, he is undefeated, um, although he is not getting a lot of credit. Um, you know, not, not a lot of credit, but not a lot of um, – respect in the fact that he's going to beat Lopez. I mean, he comes in on the box rec rankings, number nine, Lopez, number two. Um, he's 19 and 0. He's got 10 KOs. Of course, Lopez 15 tough, and 0 with 12. I just think Lopez is going to be too much for him. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't really have any significant wins. This card, I think overall is going to be super weird. Yeah. Lopez, I think it's just going to come out here and try to make this as quick of a night as humanly possible so he can get the hell off of Triller. Yeah. Um, he's come out here and publicly announced a deal once again with Top Rank, and they're already saying his next fight is going to be a pay-per-view on ESPN. Yeah. He wants nothing to do with this Triller nonsense because we can't talk about this fight without talking about the rest of this card, which is not what Triller said it was going to be back when they did the fucking their last nonsense fight card which they said they were going to make this one something for the boxing purists. And instead, they've, yeah. they've there's, got... There's some like other fight, good fights on the card, but it they still have a bunch of like artists and shit that are going to be... They've got like six shit. musical acts. Like, I don't believe that the average people buying boxing pay-per-views want a fucking concert, bro. I just yeah. don't. And it's, it's too many. I actually liked the first Triller one when they had three. There was three musical acts. I thought that went a bit long, but I was like, it's still cool. They came out and they did like three songs a piece and got the fuck out of there. Yeah. Whatever. It's better than listening to the commentators and the desk say the same things we've heard all week yeah. about the next fight. Yeah. But then they came out with their next event and they went completely overboard. Yeah. I mean, the first two hours of their last show, there was six minutes of boxing and there was an, a minute, I mean, I'm sorry, an hour and 50 minutes of music. Yeah. Like fuck that, dude. That's a little. Like, I don't. I don't need that shit. Not watching the MTV awards. No. And now they said, and everybody, there was a lot of backlash from the boxing crowd, and they said, no, don't worry, we won't do that this time. And now they've six fucking musical acts. Yeah. I'm just. I'm not down with it. There's like ten fights on there though. Right. It's gonna be how long? It's gonna be a fucking long ass, long ass card. Oh. I'm not interested, and I don't think that it's going to do well. Aside from the fact it's got competition against legit events, including then, events on ESPN and events free. on Showtime, and it's, yeah, it's got free. People can watch the Charlo fight for free. Well, not the Charlo one, but the fucking um, Inua fight. Is the, I'm sorry, yeah, that's what I meant. I meant the Inua fight. Whatever. I'm just saying. No, I agree with you 100%. I expect Lopez. I mean, I thought it was pretty unusual for him to make that announcement that they suddenly did an amended deal with top rank and they're talking about his next pay-per-view before this one's even done. Yeah. And that's like his statement to the boxing community. I am out of this thriller bullshit, this bullshit. People yeah. don't worry. Yeah. I ain't behind this shit well, ain't just, on me. Yeah. Well, and it's scary. It's scary though, because if they're not paying Mike Tyson, I don't know if they're going to pay it to you. Fima Lopez. Yeah. You have a, I can't remember the details on that, but you were listening to something here lately. Where, was on Hotbox and he talked about it like multiple times. Where the, he, they still owe him several hundred thousand dollars, apparently. More than that. He said they never paid him his back end. Well, the back end's where all the money's at. You get that front end thing, <laughs> and you agree to a smaller front end because you want that paper <coughs> in the back end. That's what I'm saying. And then they tried to sue all the people for Jake Paul's event, so I imagine they didn't get paid very much. Yeah, Dana White doesn't believe their numbers and i don't think that's just promoter talk because he came out and said that the floyd logan paul numbers are 100 percent that it broke a million are 100 percent legit because he's an insider and he knows and the same aspect is how he knows that triller's numbers are complete bullshit and when you look at what triller did with that super weird going after people who yeah. pirated and then trying to like give fans a, a chance to just Come to their website if you streamed it illegally and just give us 50 bucks, please, and say you're sorry. <laughs> like with, with fake threats that everybody that's in the game of pay-per-view knows are fake fucking threats. Yeah. That indicates to me they didn't sell well. Because mm -hmm. if you're raking in millions, you're not, I mean, you might 
try to look to the future how to stop that. Yeah. But you're not making a fool of yourself trying to get more money at, like that. Yeah. So I'm of the opinion, Paul, fuck Triller. I hope I fucking hope this is a short work fight and they get out of there yeah. and that their boxing shit sinks and goes down the fucking toilet. Because uh, it would seem it's headed that way. I love Mike Tyson, too. Fucking can't be fucking cheating Mike Tyson, man. That man's been cheated enough out of money in his goddamn life. Yeah. Fucking ass bags. So um, let's talk about, though, some more of the legitimate fights that we have. Because I don't think, like I said, I mean, he's a legit, George Kambosis is the legit number one contender. This is a mandatory fight, but uh, it's going to be short work, I think. I do too. So what about that free fight that you just mentioned? Inua? The Inua fight versus yeah. Michael Das Marinas. Yeah. Look, and I hope I'm saying that right. Um, Mikel Das Marinas. Anyway, of course, he's 20 and 0, 17 KOs. I mean, everybody who knows anything about boxing knows this dude's the monster, legit. That's why they yeah. call him. Yeah, um, he's a fucking savage. He's fighting a guy who's 30 and 2 with one draw, 20 KOs, pretty respectable. The guy's coming in on basically a um, a, a five fight win streak, sort of. I mean, he's, he's six fights, but one of those was a, a split draw. It looks okay. like, but he's got a KO, KO, KO. And then a split draw, decision, then a TKO. Okay. So he's got some power here. He's been okay. on a bit of a, a knockout streak. Um, he's a southpaw versus orthodox. Anyways, orthodox, of course. Anyways, just going to fucking tool him up. I'm sorry. Well, that's what he does. I know. It ain't even going to be close. No. Anyways, going to eat him alive. Yeah, this is taking place uh, here in Vegas. At the New Virgin Hotels, which I have not been down and checked out. Yeah, it's pretty much a hard rock all over again. It's the same shit. Is this a rebrand on the hard rock is what it is? Yeah. It's pretty similar. Hmm. What they put did they would they put something in place of the Well never mind, we won't get into yeah. that. I gotta just go down there and check it out myself. But yeah, I think it's gonna be a short work fight, but I expect it to be pretty entertaining because anyway is always entertaining. If yeah, you don't know who we're talking absolutely. about, I'd encourage you folks to tune yeah. in. It's ESPN. Like if you got basic cable, you can watch this fight. If you got ESPN plus, you can watch it, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um and he's super entertaining. He's really powerful for a Savage. small guy. Yeah. I mean only three fights where he hasn't knocked somebody out. Yeah. So what's next? Well, before we get into the craziness, let's let's talk a little bit uh Jamal Charlo, huh? Jamal Charlo. I really like the Charlo brothers, man. Yeah, I do too. And he's going to be, uh, this is for the WBC middleweight title. Yeah. He's fighting Juan Mon Montiel. Is that how I say it? Montiel? Yeah, I don't know. I'm just going Macias. <laughs> Juan Macias. Yeah. But, but uh, uh, look, Juan's 22 and 4. He's got two draws. But check this out. Those 22 wins, they're all KOs, bro. That's pretty savage. Last one was a KO over James Cler uh James Kirkland. It's pretty tough. Uh, dude, when you sport a stat like that, it's no joke to say that this dude has a puncher's chance. No oh matter yeah, what, always clearly. Oh, yeah. Despite his yeah. four losses, he's. But when you look at Charlo's Charlo side, careful. Charlo's thirty-one and zero with twenty-two KOs. So Charlo ain't no joke when it comes to the hands either. Right, Charlo's you know coming off a unanimous decision before that, he had a TKO over Dennis Hogan. Yeah. Um, I'm excited. I always like Charlo fights, man. Um, well, I mean, it, the, his last fight, that win over Dermanchenko was a good. It's a good win, though. That was a tough motherfucker. Yeah, that dude's no joke, man. That's that's a solid win. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, I'm gonna load up some of this blue dream in this pipe here. This blue dream haze. Excuse me. I really kind of hope uh, somehow. I mean, I know that fucking Canelo's up there trying to get all the the super middleweight belts together. But I do. That that's who I I want to see Canelo fight is is Charlo. You think so? I feel like it's a it's a fight that needs to happen because if he had, if he's thirty two and zero, and the middleweight champion, I think you got to come back and fight come back down and fight him if you're. You think he can lose that weight and get back down there? Because he's looking pretty. Yeah, it's thick one, it's only days, eight man. pound difference. Right? Yeah, I mean, What's it's... What's 68 to 60? 60 to 68, is it, yeah. Is this 64 or 60? I can't remember. Um, it's middleweight. I'm not certain what yeah. that constitutes anymore. I think it's 60. But, uh, yeah, I would like to see him and him and Canelo go at it. That'd be a hell of a fight. I'd like it, too. 
But I expect uh, Charlo to get the victory here. Yeah, I do too. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say he's gonna get the KO. I would hope so. Yeah. I think he's gonna sleep him late, or the TKO. You know, either way. Yeah. Same difference yep. for right now. That gets us through kind of the legitimate fights, which are all, in some aspect, I think, interesting. You know, oh, George Cambosis yeah. might not be the best, but he is a mandatory, and I'm very interested in any time Tiafoma Lopez fights. I mean, that's yeah. a guy we've been, yeah. you and I have literally been watching about and writing about for Slugfest Magazine for years. Mm-hmm. So we like to see his progression here on the show. Uh, and Nay, who's always great. Charlo, we love. What about this, this other pay-per-view taking place <laughs> down in Mexico? Yeah, where it's gonna be great. It's not put on by Triller, but it feels like it. <laughs> it's not put on by Triller, but it feels like it. <laughs> <laughs> At least they don't have musical acts, I guess. Yeah, fuck. And we're talking about this Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. versus Anderson Silva. Anderson Silva is the it's a cruiserweight bout. This cruiserweight, and then we've got. I do think that matters. I, I don't know. Because how serious is Chavez Jr. taking it if he's fighting at cruiserweight? Fucking Anderson, it makes a lot more sense for Anderson to be walking around weighing cruiserweight than it would be for Chavez Jr. to be. Just being honest. Well, yeah. I mean, those of you listening, if you're not aware, for some reason, Anderson Silva's an MMA legend. Yeah. He was a long, long time middleweight champion. Sixteen title defenses. Yeah. The Spider shot up to two hundred five a few times and wrecked hat s- Savage up there. Yeah. Been a terrible losing streak in MMA. Mm-hmm. Stuck around after Weidman broke his leg and lost basically nine fights. Yeah. You know, seven, eight fights. Terrible. Now bounced out. He and now he's boxing on this card against Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. in the co-main event. Yep. And this is a sanctioned. This is not an exhibition. This is we a sanctioned do. fight. We do need to talk about Chavez Jr., though, also has kind of been on a downswing as well. You know, he had a few years back, he lost the biggest fight of his career with, like, the Canelo fight, and he got pretty Right, handled. here in Vegas, yeah. Yeah, and then now his latest high-profile fight was Danny Jacobs, and he pretty much quit. Like, literally just quit. <sighs> yeah, that he did. I mean, he... You know. he's lost a ton of respect in the boxing world. A lot, yeah. You know, from a guy with such... A pedigree of a name yeah behind him mm-hmm. he doesn't have i mean it's just proven he doesn't have the heart his father had i mean for goodness sakes let's be honest here the guy's yeah. quit he's he's done questionable training he's retired like three times yeah <laughs> you know he, and he, he made it to that spotlight against canelo and just shit the bed basically i mean although i mean it is canelo but still like he built that he built built it up like he was going to go in there and do something and Canelo ate him alive. It was not it was not even like a challenge. He just beat the shit out of him. Yeah. Well, Anderson's one in one as a boxer. Yeah, as but a his boxer. last boxing match was like in 2002, I think. Yeah, it was a really long time ago, but that's how he can get it sanctioned oh, as yeah. a legitimate fight. Is because he actually has a boxing record. I mean, he's fuck. He's on box rec. I mean, yeah. you know, he, yeah. But they're sanctioned anything these days. Like, don't I don't want to hear shit about who can get sanctioned, and who can't get sanctioned anymore. Because they're sanctioning YouTubers and TikTokers to have a fucking card with no headgear pro boxing. Yeah, that doesn't carry much weight anymore. I I don't. Yeah. I, I, they got fucking I don't even know Chav- what to say when you bring they up got, like They got that. Chavez Sr. Mm-hmm. fighting on the, <laughs> the Coleman event. That's what I'm saying. Chavez Sr. is fighting an exhibition match against Roberto Duran Jr. or something. Hector Camacho uh, Hector Jr. Camacho. I, I, don't, I don't even know because I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, Are they wheeling him in there on his wheelchair to come in there and beat up the son of some dude he beat up? Like, that's, that's twisted weird. Yeah. Fucking bizarre, dude. Weird I don't... One. It's weird. Like, I... It is strange, without a doubt. Yeah, it's Camacho Jr. That's who he's fighting. That's yeah. crazy, dude. That, but that's an exhibition because they can't possibly sanction Julio Cesar Chavez Sr. to fight anybody. Yeah, the headgear and shit? No. They who probably cares? should, bro. <laughs> who cares? Uh, I, that's, a, that's a pay-per-view event, though. I mean, what do you think is going to happen? you think Anderson Silva can pull this off, my friend? He might. I mean... 
to me, it all depends on how serious Chavez is taking this. Because if he actually goes in there and he's training and he uses the skill set. He can't be training set, if they're fighting cruiserweight. There's no fucking way he's training if they're fighting cruiserweight. You're right. He's There's no way. <laughs> There's no way. The dude fought at 168. He's fucking cruiserweight is what? 200? Just under. So it's like, yeah, it's like yeah, he's 95 or yeah. some shit. Like, no, he's, well, good for Anderson. I hope he gets the win here because I don't really like Chavez. But if he comes in there and actually uses the skill set, I mean, he should tool Anderson Silva up because he's a professional he boxer. He should, but he fighting won't. Fighting an MMA Watch. fighter. He won't. But he'll probably lose. Yeah. And I don't even want to talk about his old-ass dad fighting on the car <laughs> um, or really anything else on there. And if people want to order that, man, I'm not shitting on you. You go do you. Watch what you like. I don't expect this card's going to do anything. You think any MMA no. fans are going to order this? No. Me neither. Maybe it'll do good live gate down there. Maybe who knows. We'll see. I couldn't understand why Triller moved their card. They were so scared of that Jake or Logan Paul, Floyd Mayweather shit. They moved their card to this. Said it was for boxing people. Because the freak show people are probably going to go to the Chavez Jr. fight. I mean, if you're boxing and you like freak show shit, that's a boxing freak show card, yeah, right? Yeah. This other one is weird, one decent fight, handful of others with weird music acts. Yeah. And then a Showtime pay-per-view and a free ESPN card. Yeah. I'm seeing big numbers for uh, ESPN and Showtime. Yeah, me too. So that ends the boxing breakdown. And we're going to wrap the show with what's in the cards for next week. What's in the cards, bro? All right, we got a UFC Fight Night Vegas, 3,676,844. That is and the number. <laughs> yes. That's what it feels like. No, no. So we got a <laughs> Fight Night Vegas uh, headlined by the Korean Zombie and Dan Ige. That should be a hell of a fight. Okay, know? that's a good fight. Yeah. I'm going to give that some props. Yeah. I like it. Dan um, Ige, you know, he's a tough motherfucker. He's got... A lot of power in his hands. But then you got Zombie on the other side who's just... Outside of his last couple fights, he's had just dominated the division. You know? Yeah, his last few fights have been a little weird. Little well, really weird, just but... his last fight because, I mean, it was the Ortega beatdown. But then he also had a couple good wins in, in between. There. I did not pass you this Blue Dream Haze. I was hogging it. I'm sorry. Well, look, Dan Ige is 15 and 3. Chan Sung Jung is 16 and 6. We all know what to expect from him. He's going to come out there and be super tough. He's going to be aggressive. He's going to walk him down. But Ige is a live fighter. Like, he's oh, yeah. good. Yeah, I don't he, think he's going to be able to just walk him down like he normally does, though, because that's how Ige fights. Too. Yeah, that's the intrigue right here. Yeah. They both walk people down. There could be a, a, a fucking Clash. quick TKO here. Think so? There could be. Yeah. And I don't even know which way it goes. Yeah, true. I feel you. Got a heavyweight co-main. I mean, let's be honest. What's in the cards this week is not much. Yeah. It's a pretty it's a pretty weak weekend. Yeah. Um, we do have Alexei Olenek fighting Sergei Spivak, who's twelve and two. Olenek, you know, is he's got six hundred victories, thirty two losses. No, I mean he's fifty nine, fifteen and one. Yeah. Like. This guy could notch his 60th win mm -hmm. in MMA. That's crazy. Yeah. Olenek is always dangerous because of his submission game. Mm -hmm. You know, And his, his striking has gotten better. And he's big, so his striking is powerful because yeah. of his size. Mm -hmm. You know, Sergey is still a pretty young fighter, especially at, at, at heavyweight. 12 and 2 is young in the game. Yeah. I, I got to go with Olenek here, yeah, probably with a submission. Mm -hmm. It'll be it'll be his 800th submission victory in combat sports or some shit because he's got he's ridiculously decorated. Yeah, I mean, we do have an interesting to me welterweight fight on here just because I'm a fan of Tim Dirty Bird Means. Yeah, I like dudes that, you know, I mean, he's he tough. did prison time. He came out. He managed to become a pro fighter still and fucking yeah. you know and do shit. And I, I always admire guys that can find a way around doing time. And making something of themselves. Yeah. Look, we're watching his fucking ass fight people on TV. But he's had a little bit of a kind of a rough time. Yeah, lately, he's had some ups know. and downs lately. He's fighting Danny Roberts, who's seventeen and five. You know, Danny's established. He's he's got some 
yeah. experience here, mm-hmm. you know, over 20 fights. I don't know who to pick here. I mean, Tim's got almost 50 fights, you know. Yeah. He's he's 31, 12, and 1 in MMA. That's crazy. That's a that's a. But he's always a live dog, man. He's he's yeah. he's tough as nails. I think that's just a toss up, but I expect a fun fight. Yeah, that's a coin flip for sure. Damn, I love the flavor <laughs> on this man. I love the flavor on this fucking haze. Marlon Vera makes his return here against Davy Grant. Yeah. One thirty five. Davy Grant's tough. Thirteen and four. I mean, I'm a little. It's strange to me that he beats Sean O'Malley. And has he had a fight since then? Yeah, remember he lost to Jose Alden. Oh, okay. Then that kills my whole point. My point was why didn't he get a more high, higher profile fight? But you're yeah, right. Yeah, he got that high profile fight and he lost to Aldo. Okay, so this is an important fight for him here but against David Grant. What the fuck are they doing giving him Aldo? Like, oh, like, that's a bit much. Like, I mean, that's a jump to the tip top of the fucking food chain outside of a title fight i mean mm-hmm. i talk shit about Aldo being at 35 but i don't i don't i mean can't i talk shit about his title pedigree. shots getting yeah. you can't deny his pedigree and his skill set I mean, yeah. good, good grief man uh matt brown is fighting douglas lima's brother diego on this yeah. card at welterweight also uh, that'll be a fun scrap i yeah. mean those guys get out there and get to work you know matt brown's tough as nails diego lima's maybe not as good as his brother but he's tough <laughs> Why you gotta dig on him like that? I don't know. <laughs> I, didn't, I guess I sounded bad. As soon as I said that, I was like, uh He's not as good as his brother. Not as good as his brother. No, I don't mean. I'm just saying, like, maybe he is not war yeah. championship gold, but he shouldn't be yeah, he's tough underrated. Fight. Yeah, he's you know a tough what I mean. Fighter, he's a very, sure. he's a very skillful fighter. That's that's yeah. the point I was trying to make. I know. I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> very good. You be champ. Yeah. And his brother rubs it in. No. Uh, not after this. Not after weekend. this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going with Matt Brown there, though. Matt Brown's just tough. Yeah, I'd like to see Matt Brown pick up the win. Just uh, I, I don't know how much longer Matt Brown's going to be in, in the UFC, so we'll see. I'd like to see him retire on a win. That'd be good for him. Yeah, maybe he you goes know. out with this win. I wouldn't be mad at that. I yeah. like Matt, but it's been a long career, buddy. Yeah, it has for sure. 24 and 18? Yeah. I started to think he's had that many losses now, but Matt Brown's tough as nails. Good fight. Yeah. Um. Not a lot in the cards for next week other than that, is there? It's going to be a slow weekend, my friend. Then it picks up again after that. Yep. Oh, weed is smoking. I think that wraps our show for this weekend, Paul. Yep, I think that does. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you've enjoyed whatever you're smoking on as well. If you're brand new, you can catch us uh, wherever podcasts are located. You can also catch us on KLVM Radio, 3 p.m., on Tuesdays, 6 p.m. on the East Coast. 3 p.m. is out here on the West Coast. We've taken all the podcast outlets from Amazon to Google and Audible, and we put them all together in one place where you can find that information, plus other stuff about us. Spotandmade.com, where you can head over there, click the gear button, and support the podcast. Thanks, people. Peace. Later.